Hey, I'm Ansley Cole, and I want to talk a little bit about the wine that we use for distillation. We are uh, contracting with growers to harvest grapes to our specification, and then they deliver it by truck to the Dunwood Winery, which is um, just north of town in Ukiah. And it's a very large and sophisticated winery. It's funny to think about here, we're doing this incredibly, you know, very old fashioned hand method distillation. And so, why are we using this hyper modern winery? Well, the basic reason is that we just get way better wine by using somebody who has this level of experience, expertise, and equipment um, to make wine with. So the wine gets weighed in, it gets put through a, it gets dumped into a, a mechanical screw, it gets goes through a destemmer, it gets, um, unfortunately we were unable to shoot our own grapes because they were too early and our scheduled shoot was after our grapes came in. So this is Lake County Cabernet, but it's basically the same process except that if it were our wine, we would not be keeping the skins. It would be a much lighter color, but otherwise the process is exactly the same. And uh, the thing to realize about this is that stainless steel is really important because the you know you don't want any contamination by bacteria or other yeasts of your grapes or your wine. And then um, using a bladder press, which is a really that's a very modern invention, and it's a much gentler and uh, cleaner process of extracting uh, juice from grapes. After the grapes have been pressed and we have the finished juice, we put it into a, a stainless steel tank, which is uh, has controlled temperature. It's a jacketed tank. They can raise or lower the temperature as they see fit. And this is enormously important for the control of the fermentation process. And then they have this very sophisticated lab and a ton of experience with making all kinds of different wines from different varietals because they make hundreds of different wines every year. And so we can call on this expertise if there's something like an uh, interrupted fermentation, the malolactic fermentation tends to get stuck, or we have some process going on, one of the yeasts was off a little bit, and we have something in there we don't want, we're exactly in the right place for somebody to tell us how to fix it and actually carry that out. So I guess what I'm saying in the end is that none of this equipment is in standard use in uh, Europe. Um, I mean, when I was in Cognac, uh, the tanks are ambient temperature uh, concrete tanks done by native yeast, and they make pretty good stuff, but you know, the level of, of, of control uh, that we have just doesn't exist. And uh, they use uh, these big mechanical presses that crush the grapes instead of uh, press them. And so they have stems broken and seeds in the, in the, in the wine that uh, give them off flavors. And then their storage uh, in cognac, they have to, after six weeks after harvest, they're not allowed to make any cognac that isn't that's labeled as anything better than VS. They can't make VSOP. They can't make XO. They can't make special editions. It's forbidden because everybody knows after six weeks, the wines have started to go a little bad. Something we never have to worry about. Our wine is as good four months after it's made as it was the day it was made. So what this comes to is the purification process, the concentration process that happens when we put stuff in the still is being used on some of the best wines being made anywhere.